So you have the signs that someone has quietly quit on you. You know why they may have quietly quit. So what are we going to do about it? In this video, I am going to give you what originally was going to be three ways to address it, but now it's going to be four on how you can address someone who may be quietly quitting in your organization. This is where I, as a business owner, am about to get very active. I will have to admit one of the reasons for this video was twofold. One, I saw it in an organization that I'm consulting for. And number two, I saw it unfortunately in my own organization. And so what I want to be able to do is on this journey, figure out why or dress if somebody really is quietly quitting. And I want to make sure that my employees, when they come to work, they actually want to be there. I do not want a toxic culture or a culture where people are dreading to come to work. So how are we going to do that? Step one, you want to have regular performance reviews. Uh, and I admittedly to say that we just started this last year. Uh, we have about 28 employees now. And that was something that was always lacking at our organization. And so now we have a formal process by which we actually do performance reviews. That is very important. Uh, however, in researching some things for this particular video, I also found out that it's important that maybe you do them more often than just a yearly. And so they don't have to be the full blown performance performance review, but there should be some opportunity for a two-way conversation to happen and to occur in order for your employees to be able to know how they're performing, provide any valuable feedback to them on their performance. And this is also a great time to do that recognition, like we talked about as one of the root causes. It's also a great time to figure out whether or not they're frustrated with some of the processes that the organization or feel like it's inconsistent or they don't belong. So that performance performance review and that two-way conversation gives you the opportunity to be able to address some of those root causes that we saw earlier. Number two is professional development. And so I don't want anybody to feel stuck or stagnant or feel like there's no place for them to advance. And right now I must say our org chart sucks. Okay. So, and that's one of the things that's on my list for this year is to have a better org chart and one where my technicians have an ability to be able to advance in the organization. My pharmacists have the ability ability and the opportunity to be able to advance in the organization and not just making sure they have the skills now, but being able to cultivate them to be the leader and professionally what they need to be able to do in order to grow at my organization. Or maybe they find another organization where they actually want to go to whatever it may be. I want to make sure I'm setting my people up for success. So what does that professional development look like? How do I help them have better communication skills, helping them to understand data analytics and what clients may ask for and anticipating the needs of clients, anticipating the needs of their manager, anticipating the needs of their staff members if they're actually going to be in a management role. So those are the things that we can do from a professional development standpoint. You know, there's some things around just organization tools, productivity tools um, that are right in Microsoft packages that a lot of people may not know how to use. I have a video on how to use Microsoft to do to help keep you organized and make sure that you stay on task with things that you have to do on a daily basis. And the world we're in is this Medicare industry in space. And so helping them be more knowledgeable about what's going on in the Medicare industry, how that affects the members and the clients that we serve. All of those things are going to help my team become better professionally. And so I encourage you, um, if you're watching this video and you have someone who may have quietly quit, or you just want to prevent it from occurring, go back and look at what opportunities exist within your organization for people to be able to advance and to be able to go to another level. Now, not everybody wants to be promoted and go into these management roles and that kind of stuff, but there should be some type of way for somebody to advance. Maybe that's more responsibilities um, that you're giving them that they're equally bought into actually doing, not that you're just dumping work on them. Most recently, I've had an employee that I'm getting more engaged on the project management side. And so this is just going to be able to help that particular individual build up another skill set that they may not have had in the role that they are. So I encourage you just take a few moments to go back to your organization and look for ways that you you can invest into the professional development of your team members so that they can become better for your organization and feel better about themselves and not quietly quit on you. Number three is probably the most important and that is going to be communication. Uh, we all need to do better at communicating and I think 
that we should actually do this more than just one way. It shouldn't just be emails. It shouldn't just be team meetings every week. It should be multimodal. So um, I'm even thinking of implementing a newsletter for my team that will go out periodically that talks about, hey, here's what's going on in the industry. Um, here's what happened this week. And then having a shot out in the newsletter so that everybody can see the wins of the team and then having individual recognition. So I encourage you to find better ways to communicate things that are going on with your team. Now, this should not just be a push communication. This should also be a pull. So your team members should be able to come to you and provide information and feedback and grievances. And we want the good, the bad, and the ugly. We want them to bring that information to you and then to have a two-way conversation um, on how best to address those issues if it is, or if it's a kudos that's being given, how do we build off of that best practice? So communication is probably the most important out of all three of these that we have given. Now, the fourth one is going to be a bonus one that I am actually getting ready to do, and that's going to be an employee engagement survey. And so I hated these when I was in corporate America. Um, I hated these when I was at the pharmacy working, um, but they are actually needed. Here's why. It's one reason why I hated employee engagement surveys. I felt that whenever I completed them, the organization in the company didn't do anything with it. So I could put a seven out of 10 on something, a 10 out of 10 on another, a three out of 10 on something else, and nothing happened to either one of them. And so it was like nobody valued the opinion of the employee engagement survey. And so I will say at another client of mine last year, they had some startling employee engagement results. And they did this full campaign around making sure that the employees knew that what they provided in that survey, they actually heard them. And that encouraged me now to do the same for my team. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be building out an employee engagement survey. Now, there's a lot of companies that can do this for you. If you're like me and you're a small business owner and you have limited resources, you may not have the resources to be able to do that yet. So what I'm going to do, because this is really a fact finding mission for me, I want to know how my employees feel. I want to know if they think that the work environment's toxic. Are there areas that we're doing very well in and then there are areas that we're not doing very well in? I want to know, do they feel like they're being heard? Um, do they want advancement opportunities and they're not there? Is that causing them to just do the bare minimum? I want to know from my team in an anonymous way that it's comfortable for them to report to me and the other officers of my company and the management team to say, hey, here are some things and some areas that we need to work on as a company. I, and then this is just a quick plug. You have to have the right people, the right process and the right technology as a business owner. If you either one of those three things fail, your business is going to fail. And so right now I really want to make sure that I'm focusing on my people because we are in the people business, okay? Everything's about customer service. Everything is about good customer service. When people begin to feel that they don't belong, they feel that the work is boring, uh, they begin to quietly quit. It is even more astronomical when they're in a customer service focused business. So guess who else they're quietly quitting on? They're quietly quitting on that customer Customer that's on the other end of that phone line. They're quietly quitting on your client. So don't, don't think of it just as them quietly quitting on your organization. They're quietly quitting on the people that you serve. So in saying all of this, I am going to put together an employee engagement survey. I'm going to film the entire process. I'm going to do some research in what questions should be asked. Um, how long should the survey be? And not just stop there, but also what should the analysis uh, look like? What should I be looking for? And then how do we develop a plan to address what we've actually found in that employee engagement survey? If this is something that you find interesting, I encourage you to subscribe and like uh, this video, subscribe to this channel, uh, turn on the notification notification bell so that when those videos are posted, you are notified. So hopefully everything in this series was very helpful to you. I hope that you don't have anybody who's quietly quit your organization. However, if you do, I hope that you found this particular video helpful in knowing what you can do to take steps in addressing those people who are quietly quitting and prevent it if it has not yet occurred in your organization. So thank you for following the journey and please drop any comments below, um, like again and subscribe this video and be on the lookout for others within this series.